you. You know, Thank one you, one of those one of those um, struggles that Wanye kind of touched on was actually that um, us staying together, and we questioned that like a lot, especially when the industry changed and and. Let's be honest, there were a lot of radio program directors and a lot of people around the country that didn't want to play our music anymore. But they thought that we were over, we're done, we're, you know, oh, it's, you know, it's this new wave now and, and you know, and, and it got into this corporate thing and stuff that we just didn't understand because we were taught and we were felt, you know, we were taught rather that if you do this, you get this. If you work hard to do this, that, and the third, then you should get that. And one of the hardest things for us to, to deal with was that we didn't get that. So with all the things that we did and all of the paths that we laid for us to, because we always knew there was going to be a downside. I don't think anybody in the music industry that's ha that actually had a career um, ever stays on top forever. There's, I don't care who you are. Like, there's always a, a drop, and then you come back up. But the thing is, is, you know, we thought that by doing the right things to people and for people that – we was going to get some sort of reciprocation, and it didn't happen. So we were confused. We were like, but wait, like you said you were our friend. <laughs> you said that you were just not just our program, a program director, but you was our homies and this, that, and the third, and people literally turned their backs on Boys Gang. Mm -hmm. so, so we were like, wow, well, should we stay together? Like, is this it? Like, you know, we did this, and now people are telling us we're done with you now? And we said, nah. Nah, we'll stay together because because we if if we don't do it for anybody else, we're doing it for us, and and this is why we're doing this. We we stayed together because of us because there was nobody else around <laughs> when 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 things went down. All we had at the end of the day was us three. Yeah. So we decided, you know what? We're gonna stick it out. We're gonna fight. We're gonna do what we love to do. We're gonna cry. We're gonna scream. We're gonna shout. We're gonna break up three or four times, but we're always gonna keep it together. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's real talk. And and again, just like Wanye said, we go through life. We go through life just like everybody else. We go through issues just like everybody else. But we're taught as professionals to keep it away. So that's what we were taught to do. But you know, we're fortunate enough to still be here. And people like you who still support us and love us for who we are and not what we're trying to be or trying to fit in to be in this format. Ah, the hell with a format. We're, tr we're doing what us. We're doing us because that's what we know. And that's all music. we know. It's about, it's about music. music. That's all. One thing I'm glad is, you know, that you all are staying true to who you all always have been. You know, sometimes when things happen, like you said, you know, you run into you know, circumstances, they change who they are to try to fit yeah. into a box. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, but I'm glad you all have stayed true to who you are. Yeah, I mean, just like Sean said, there, there were times when we thought about it. I mean, you know, we, we felt that maybe we needed to change in order for people to hear what we had to say. But, I mean, you know, when you've got 60 million fans that have bought into an idea, it's very difficult to try to change it in the middle. And um, <clears throat> a lot of artists tend to do that. And it's, it's natural. Being a creative artist, you always want to try something different. You don't want to do the same things, or otherwise you wouldn't be a creative artist. And the tough part is, even when people come out with records, they come out with their first album, and it's, 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 you know, it's a smash or whatnot, and then everybody's waiting on the second one, that you just don't have enough time to put everything that you put into the first one into the second one. So you're never going to get the same thing. That's why you get that sophomore jinx a lot of times. But at the end of the day, What's important is that the artist stays true to who they are and what they're about and not try to change too far, that that audience will usually be there for them. The toughest part is that there's always a funnel between the audience and the artist, whether it's the label promoting it, whether it's the radio stations playing it or whatever. You guys can't get the music, so we, we can't walk to your house and give it to you. We have to hand it to someone else to get it to you guys. <laughs> she said, you can come to my house. Come on over. All but, right, um, girlfriend. <laughs> you cook it? Yeah, that's the question. Can you cook? <laughs> Can you cook healthy? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Organics? <laughs> nice. That'll work. Speaking of the industry, you know, the industry has changed so much since, you know, when you all first started. Yeah. What would you say are some things that you like about the industry now and some things that you don't like about the are industry Are we going to do the now? reverse? 
I do, you do what you like. I do what I like. Why you do what you don't like? I mean, you all can each <laughs> say, you oh, know. Yeah, I it's a method to it. Like. Oh, oh, okay. It's Let me method. step back. Let me so step back. No, like. I'll tell you what I like. I like <laughs> you answered all that. I like yeah. the fact that the artist is empowered. I like the fact that the artist does not have to rely solely on a record label or a radio station or any type of promotion to really get where they need to get to. If they have an, an idea and a focus on what they want to do, the internet has allowed everyone to be who they want to be. Now, some people act like fools, but some people get out there and really start pushing and really get themselves out there, i.e. Justin Bieber. Things like that didn't happen 10 or 15 years ago. So the access that everyone in the world can see who you are and get your product in a matter of seconds is the biggest thing that I think is absolutely incredible about the music industry today. Pow. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I really like, honestly, I, I like focus on more so the musical aspect of things because I'm a music guy. And um, I just, um, I look at the 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 sound of, of things, you know, um, everything's to me is, is sounding the same, you know what I mean? The same producers producing the same beats for a different artist and you know what I mean? It's it's writing the same the same melodies, the you know, four notes in a in a in a in a verse. You know, it's like you got and you're like, wow, you know, that's that's the song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, but we come from the time Smash. where <laughs> we come from. The <laughs> yeah, I mean, we come from the time where where music, where, where melodies, songs were melody driven. You know what I mean? They were melody driven. I mean, and before the music even came in, sometimes so certain songs would give you the, the element of love. You know what I mean? And, you know, nowadays, you know, you, you have that format that everybody, you know, gravitates to and it becomes what the hit makers consider to be hits. And they play it, they push it, and, and it, it, it burns in their head just like anything else. It's like you teach a kid the ABCs, they learn it, they're never going to forget it. That's how it is. They, you know, they play the music, they burn it in their heads, and, and they know the songs, they sing in Laffy Taffy, don't know what the hell it is, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, and, and, it, and it becomes a hit. It becomes a hit. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? But you understand, so I think I, I'm, I'm, I just, I just, I, <laughs> now, now, granted, now, granted, there are some artists out right now who are maintaining the integrity of music. You know, you have the Neos, you have the, you have the, uh, the Chris Browns, you have, you know, Beyonce's, the Ushers, uh, you know, certain people there, they're really, you know, making sure that they give a little bit of something. They still give it that, you know, the, the format, but. They give you a little bit of something to go off and let you know that I am a real artist. I can do this. I'm just doing this because this is what's selling. You know what I mean? I so, can't sing. Yeah, yeah. But what we <laughs> right, choose, what we sing. choose to do, what we choose to do is again, like driving our own lane. You know what I mean? I mean, we 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 have a business. We have a brand. Boyz II Men is a brand, and 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 we've built enough of this brand to be able to not need the different avenues that you know what I mean. Most artists may need. We can go overseas and, and for for two months and make a significant amount of money, come back home and still tour 32 shows, you know what I mean? What, 90-something shows a year, you know what I mean? So we actually are good with our brand. We feel good about it. It would be wonderful to be able to give you the music that's driving us. It would be great to be able to play those songs for you and for radio to push forward and play those songs so that you can not not even to buy it, just so to feel it. You know what I mean? These songs are feeling. These are, these songs give life. The songs that we had on the other albums, those songs became the soundtracks to our lives because we used those things to get us to the next level. You know, water runs dry. People didn't know how to express you know, that emotion at the time. They wanted to because if it, they didn't want to, they wouldn't have gravitated to it. You know what I mean? I'll make love to you. They, it was the type of song that allowed you to express an intimate action without it being vulgar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. I, you got you got nine year olds. Yes. You got nine and six year olds in our concerts singing "I'll Make Love to You," standing right next to their mom, and, and 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 they're not saying nothing because there's a difference between making love. They were created through making love. Most of them. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Some of them, hopefully. But you know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know what I mean? It's Generally about music. Speaking, yeah, there, there are not even a lot of love songs anymore. Yeah. It's about, yeah. I want to well, get you, with you and what we going to do. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, it's I mean, not about love anymore. Again, it's you. we live in, like I like to say, a push-button, instant coffee society where, you know, everything is now. The patience is gone. 
even when it comes to, to songwriting and lyrics, it's like, you know, let's just really get to the point of what I want to say. I don't want to draw it out in the song. I don't want to use my brain and come up with really intricate words that would really think about what, make you think about what I'm writing. I just want to hit it. So that's what I'm going to write. Yeah. I want to hit it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just easy. And you, and you get straight to the point. Yep. They don't want to write love. They don't want to write, you know, the rain is falling it's outside the cool. window and I feel they don't wanna they don't wanna do that. And you know what I hate too, Nate, you know what I hate is the fact that when artists tend to pull out the scapegoat as far as like, well, you know, we're we're not we're just artists. You know, we don't we're not your, you know, parents, you know, the kids' parents and things of that nature and all that other stuff. But come Role on. Models, yeah. Like but you know what though, but you know what though, the, the music has a spirit. Okay? When, you know, the the you know, armies back in the day used to get ready for war, what did they do? They played those trumpets. So it got you into a spirit of ready, being ready to fight. You understand what I'm saying? Like, that's music. When, you know, violins and things of that nature were playing in a beautiful room, it put you in another spirit. You understand what I'm saying? Like, music is a spirit. So, so when you're playing something in a radio station where millions of kids are listening at the same time, that's a spirit being pushed onto them. So the thing is, is that when, whenever someone says, well, I'm just a singer, I'm not a role model, that's irresponsible. Right. <laughs> that's, being, that's being irresponsible because, because that's just a cop-out to basically say, I just want to do what I want to do, get my money and get the heck up out of here. When they know, you see it. You've seen the kids regurgitating a lot of the lyrics that are on these the in these songs and things of that nature and actually trying to use those approaches. Like I wanna hit it approach. You know yeah, what I'm saying? But what they heard on their favorite rapper to or or singer, whatever, to a girl and things of that nature. And it's crazy because it's it's perpetuating this type of mood, you know, in kids that grow up that make them feel like, well, I can do that. And make girls say, Well, I can wear that because she did it. You know what I'm saying? Or I can sing this because she sang it. You know what I'm saying? So it, it creates that type of energy. Music is a spirit, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Like, don't get I mean, that, don't get that twisted. But also, we have to realize again, is you know, like anything, artistry is about art. You know, it's about what's inside of you. Pulling those things out, depending on what it is that you're pulling out, it it it's all about what's selling. You know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, I, I always use the analogy of of sh sketching pencil art. You can't hang pencil art up into in a gallery. You can, but it's not going to sell. Once you put the color on it, that is what you hang in a museum. That's what music is supposed to represent. We are the the song begins with a sketch. You know, we add the color, and then we allow those songs to come out, and you hang in in the museum of your hearts. And that spirit is it stays with you. But if you don't have the color. And it's not going to stay with you. And gone are the are the long lasting songs like "End of the Road" and "And I'll Make Love to You." The songs that you're going to remember twenty years later, and your kids' kids are going to be singing. And gone are those songs because there's no color in the painting yeah. anymore. I got they'll, a question. They'll, I, never, I got they'll never be any legendary artists ever built in yeah. our lifetime ever again. Speaking of that, we don't yeah. have the patience. Yeah, check this out. I want to ask y'all a question. Time. I want to ask y'all a question real quick. I want to ask y'all a question. Um, have you guys ever been to, like, your, you guys' reunions, high school reunions or anything like that? Yeah. All right, so when you go to your high school reunion, your 10, 20, 30, or whatever, um, you go and you hang out, and the DJ, you know, is playing songs at that period, right? And y'all are all back there. Y'all drinking. Y'all having fun. Down, 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 down. You know what I mean? Frankie Beverly, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it, it, it basically takes you back to that time. Let me ask you a question. What are the kids going to listen to in 10 years after high school? What artist is going to come, what, is, what artist is going to mark their period in time? You understand what I'm saying? Like, who, who's, who's, who, like, well, how many artists that, like, the, 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 the DJ got to have a, a stack of records a mile high because we live on a basis of just singles and yeah. things of that nature. There's no careers anymore. There's no artist being created to have a career. So the thing is, is that in 10 years in high school, like, what are they going to rock to? Well, the tough part, the tough part about it is that we got to get used to it. I, I know it sucks, but it's not going to change. I mean, we're not going to get any more legendary artists. We're not going to get any, you will get some songs with substance thrown in here and there. But for the most part, I mean, it, it, it it's not, 
I always believe that music is a reflection of society. Society moves too fast. There is no patience. I mean, when you get schools telling you that we're about to take physical handwriting out of the schools because no one uses it anymore and everyone types on a computer, you've got to really recognize what's happening right now. We're about to lose the only form of communication that we ever had. And it happens throughout history. I mean, we don't write on rocks anymore either. So eventually it's going to go away. But a lot of times, I'm only saying this because a lot of times we tend to try to hold on to the past and we get lost in the future because we don't embrace it. We have to try to embrace it and take what's good from it and use the good part of it and let the rest of it alone because it's not going.